Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about fitness, which is one of the categories under the Be Ready tab on liveinretirement.com. And yes, okay, so fitness, it is one of the things we have to do to be ready to do the things we want to do and to live our best retirement. Before you do anything, on this video, make sure you check with your doctor to make sure that it works with you. So, number one, fitness. These are the things that, this is your routine. I call it my work, my fitness workout. Um, this isn't your fun stuff like, you know, going on a bike ride with a group or anything like that. This is your, I need to be ready, I need to do these things in order to live my best retirement. So what did I do? Well, initially I did everything wrong as usual. Um, I, you know, did some cardio and basically that was the only thing I did. I never did any kind of strength training at all. I just did cardio and I did it at a very low level. I never broke a sweat. In fact, I was pretty proud of the fact that I never broke a sweat. I would actually brag about the fact that I, I just don't sweat. Um, but again, so what did I learn? What are the things that I did learn from trainers, classes, reading, etc.? These are the things I learned. Number one, you yes, you have to do cardio, but you have to break a sweat. Yes, you have to do strength training. Uh, you, you have to build up those muscles, particularly at our age when we're losing it faster than our body can naturally replace it. So those two big things and I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail uh, on uh, cardio as well as strength training and then uh, we'll we'll do a summary uh, let's start with cardio the first thing is yeah you do have to break a sweat I mean that is key and for my age and for the rest of us out there live in retirement low impact is key so Yes, you have to break a sweat. Low impact is key. You don't want to, you know, put pressure on your knees or other joints. You want to have it be low impact. So then the key is finding something you love to do. So whether it's biking, very low impact, swimming, very low impact, elliptical in the gym, very low impact, and so on and so forth. There are dozens of low impact, high cardio things that you can do. It's just finding what works for you. And it took me a while. I started with the elliptical and I used interval training for 30 minutes, just 30 minutes. I would do two minutes of low speed, three minutes of my max speed, okay? And I would do this for five minutes, so I'd know two minutes on, three minutes off, highest, two minutes off, three minutes highest, two minutes, and so on and so forth until I got to 30 minutes. So again, broke a little sweat, but got a little break. I was able to do that. And it's really, this interval training is really the key now to getting the most out of a short workout. So if you try anything, try that one to start off with in a gym or at your home, something where even if you're walking outside where you walk, you know, your normal pace and then speed it up for three minutes. Walk your normal pace, speed it up for three minutes. Do that for a half an hour. Do that for 15 minutes. Do it for whatever works for you, but start moving. Okay, so there's one thing I want to show you, which is this heart monitor. And if, if you can get one, do so. Because when you're first starting out, and you you'll, again, you'll want to talk to your doctor about this, is you'll find out, hey, this is what heart rate I want to get to. This is the heart rate that I want to achieve when I'm at my highest. For me, I only want to, the highest level I ever want to go to is about 160. And then when I'm going down to my two minute slowdown, I only want to go down as low as maybe 135, 140. So when I go down and up, I want to stay in that range of 160 to 135, 140. So it just helps you. Some, you know, it's a, it's an additional tool. It's not something you have to have, but it's certainly something that helped me. So I'm going to share that with you. This is called the Polar. This is called a Polar. 
and um, it, it's been very good, but I'm sure there's millions of other ones out there as well. The other great thing I a lot of people love are classes at the gym, and a lot of the, uh, the classes now are designed for low impact, like we have a class called Zumba Gold. I don't go to Zumba Gold, but a lot of people love it, and so I just wanted to make sure that you're checking that out as well at your gym. Another tool that a lot of people use and just love is a Fitbit. And um, they, they try to get their 10,000 steps. They can show all kinds of different things. There's a million different versions besides Fitbit. But again, um, I, I know a lot of people that love it. You can have a competition with people. And uh, you know, so there's a million different ways to uh, get in your cardio exercise. But once again, low impact, break a sweat. Those are two key things and making sure you do it every week. Okay, so the next thing is that you have to do is strength training. And what does that mean? That means working on your muscles, using weights, using your own weight, whatever the case might be, it is key. And it was one of the things I wasn't doing. And I, so I wasn't losing weight, I wasn't feeling stronger, and it is I cannot stress this enough. If you are not doing strength training, you're not going to live your best retirement. You just won't because we are losing muscle so fast at this age. Our body cannot replace it naturally. So you are, you know, when you're younger, your body replaces your muscle loss naturally. But at our age, it doesn't. We're losing it faster than what our body can replace it with. So you have to do something. What does muscle mass do? What does do muscles help you with? Is number one is you can do the things you want to do. You'll have the strength to do the things you want to do. And number two, it helps you lose weight faster because muscle burns fat faster. So it does two really important things so I can't stress this enough. So whether you go to the gym, whether you do your own home gym, whatever you do, it please do it. So don't make the, the mistake I did and go years by just doing cardio and, and really not seeing too much results, frankly. I also have a home gym and I've provided you with some easy strength training that you can do right in your own home with a couple of weights. Go to Target, spend ten dollars get a couple of weights and you can start out and do these exercises that are on the website at livingretirement.com under strength training video and you know do one or two of them try to do at least one exercise for each one of your muscles and i've i've labeled uh i have them all listed out so try to do an exercise for each one of the muscles, just one. Start out with one. If you can only do five reps, that's good too. But one of the things I love is doing the uh, resistance or strength training at the gym because there's classes that you can take, there's social, it, you know, it's social, it's fun, and I think they kind of push you a little bit more than what you would normally do in your own home gym. So, uh, you know, it's up to you, but as I say, gyms now are so uh, exp so affordable. You can join Planet Fitness for $10 a month. You can join One Life, which is the one I belong to and just love, love, it, for $40 a month. What does that mean? You, you'll have, you might have to come back, cut back somewhere else, but, you know, this is about you being ready to live your best retirement. So, you know, invest in yourself invest in yourself this is a big one it's part of your health it'll make you stronger so think about it and you know really look at joining a gym but again do the home gym if you'd like as well okay so we've talked about that we have to do cardio we have to do strength training and the third thing you have to do is set a goal for yourself a weekly goal whether you know, you're know you just starting out and you're gonna do one of each for 30 minutes, make a goal, put it on your schedule, put it on your action plan, put it on your calendar, and make it happen. 
what I do, I, I started out again very small, doing one for half an hour, one of each for half an hour. I'm now up to four times a week, two cardio, two resistance. And then I try to live an active lifestyle as well, but it's key to set this goal. Now, I put it on the schedule. I, I say, okay, on Monday I'm gonna do this, Tuesday I'm gonna do this, and so on and so forth. However, things happen. It rains, so I can't go out and bike, things like that. It, you know, I, I have an appointment or I'm going out to dinner. Things happen, but the one thing, so it doesn't have to occur on the same day but you have to get it within that seven days. So for me, I start my week Monday and it ends on Sunday. So sometime between Monday and Sunday, I have to get four workouts in. I'm up to an hour now. And I know I can do that. It's hard. It's, you know, something I have to squeeze in, you know, amazingly, but it is true. And, and so, you know, but I, I force myself to do it. It's like something I put on the, the, my weekly plan and if I don't cross it off, I feel guilty. So that's the way we should be because we are trying to get ready so that we can live our best retirement. The last thing is, is as we wrap up, so number one, do your cardio, break a sweat, low impact. Number two, you gotta get in that strength training and number three, set a goal. The last thing is, I'd like to hear what you're doing. I'd like to hear any tips that you have. Please go to our website at liveinretirement.com and tell us on the Let's Talk tab, you know, what you're doing, what's worked for you on fitness. And so we can all learn from you as well.